Hey guys, and welcome to I Want My HTV Reviews. I'm Sarah, and today we are gonna be discussing the HBO Max original, It's a Sin. This is not a light one. Awesome, before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. This one is really important to talk about. Um, and before I get started on the dive in, I actually brought a really good friend of mine on because I feel like there's some things I can talk about and other things I need help with. So I'm introducing a new cast member to the Smells Like Teenage team. This is Eric Bridges. We have been friends forever. And, uh, you know, I felt it was really important to bring someone that's a part of the community to talk about this incredible series. But first, Eric, introduce yourself. Why should people like be excited that you're here? Uh, well, my name is Eric, as you said. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as uh, Chefin at Home or on the Indigo Chameleon, uh, where I play D&D &D in a very open, accepting community, which is pretty important for me. Uh, I'm a huge nerd. As you can see uh, behind me, uh, these were painted for me, commissioned. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, um, I'm, I'm excited to be part of this and, and talk about this really important uh, mini series. Yeah, Eric and I text text each other constantly about things we're watching. You know, we watched To All the Boys I Love Always and Forever, and he was very upset that he did not get yeah. to talk about that one with me. Yeah, I mean Noah. <laughs> okay, so let's jump in to this HBO Max original series. It's a sin um, that is premiering here on February 18th. It's already playing in the UK. Uh, for those that might not know what this series is about, it is about a young group of friends coming of age in the 80s in London during the AIDS epidemic. I really enjoyed the series. Eric, what did you think? Yeah, I loved it. Um, I mean, it's, it, as you said, not light at all. Like, it is, it is some heavy watching. Uh, but honestly, like, once I started, I plowed through the entire series in a day. Like, it is so good just to kind of, like, experience, like, I, I mean, I know what it's like to come out in your early 20s and kind of, you know, finally get to be yourself and experience the world in a new way. But, like, part of that is honestly being really promiscuous. And when there's this new disease that no one understands, like, it just experiencing this through them just added a whole new layer that I never even like I knew that it happened but I never really understood you know like coming out's hard coming out during that is so much harder um but it was it was so interesting to watch and these characters are so rich and developed and they're they are characters who are happen to be gay like you know not just they're gay like it's it's really really good yeah and uh, uh, we talk about how this is done by the queerest folk people right mm -hmm. um and you can yeah. absolutely tell by um the character the core group of friends i feel like are written kind of similarly uh mm -hmm. they are as you said full fleshed characters this is also a really short series it's like what five episodes uh, five or five or six. Yeah, I, I want to say six. Um, I, but I, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it's the perfect length because mm -hmm. for such a heavy subject, it doesn't. It would be really easy for this series to get kind of preachy and kind of drag on, um, mm -hmm. but they didn't do that. They told such an incredible and powerful story in mm -hmm. such a short amount of time. This series isn't just one year, it's a span of years. Yeah, I wanna say it's like an eight year span, like six to eight, somewhere in there, maybe yeah. less than that. I don't know, cause it's so short and it's so emotional. Like you're just all, you're along for the ride and like, you know, you they might flash a date, but you're probably crying and wiping like. <laughs> I know, there were definitely times when I had to be like, I can't, I'm just gonna, I gotta pause for a minute. <laughs> Did you have a favorite character or storyline from the show? Um, hmm. I mean, I, I love Neil Patrick Harris because let's, okay. let's be honest about this. He is, you know, one of the patron saints of homosexuality. Um, but, 
Um, but I loved Colin so much. His story is so beautiful. And like that final, that final reveal just, I, oh, <laughs> I know we're here trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible. Right. Everyone really should dive in and watch it. He was yes. just like a sweet angel baby. And you know, who was like from the tiniest little town who was mm -hmm. gay and like moved in and was taken in by the wildest, most <laughs> outgoing, extraordinary characters. Mm -hmm. and it's like, he was yeah. precious. I, I really, I agree with you. I really loved his character. I also really, really loved Roscoe. I'm getting out of here. I'll be staying at 23 Piss Off Avenue, London, W fuck. Yes. And, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> you see it in the trailer. He like barges in. He's like, ah, bleh. and you know, he leaves his family. And I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed his arc, his family's arc. Mm -hmm. Um, it really, it didn't actually go in a way I expected. It wasn't super predictable for me, which I feel like it absolutely could have been. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And him at the very end, I was like, yes. I'm not going <laughs> to yep. tell anybody what it is, but I was like, yep. yeah. Enjoying it. Just... Yeah. yeah. And speaking, <laughs> speaking of Roscoe, like the, the fact that they did address homosexuality in the 80s in London across different racial groups Absolutely. was amazing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they could have very easily, I mean, I loved Queer's Folk, we know that. It, it was very quick. Yeah. Quick, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like us right now, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting is the wrong word. It was really refreshing mm -hmm. to see them tackling homosexualities across different races and different religious backgrounds and how the families handle that, you know? I mean, Roscoe's family was exactly. completely different from anything I had ever seen on television, you know, on like mainstream Absolutely. television. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it was, it was really, really. I found <clears throat> Richie to be really kind of interesting and the parallels of what we have going on today. Right, we have people who are like, "Ugh, it's not going to get us. It's not over here. Oh, we're fine. It's a hoax. It's not real." There are boys dying all over the world from sex. That'd be ridiculous. That would be all over the news. And then there comes that spiral of shame of once you realize you were wrong, and his character, I thought, handled that so well. And it really kind of got to me the way he talked about how he felt he deserved it because of, you know, how, how it happened for him and mm -hmm. that he like purposely did things because of how much he hated himself. And I was like, that was like. Yeah. Well, and so important. Like the stigma is still there. I mean, you know, I, I've had friends who lived with the disease and didn't say anything for years because of the stigma. I mean, I myself didn't get tested for years because I didn't want to know, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it was just the lack of education, you know? And the, the fact that there is a stigma. And I did come from a, you know, a pretty right-wing family. So, yeah. <laughs> putting it lightly, <laughs> just putting yeah. it lightly. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's such an important story to tell. And then to contrast that with people who are very informed on their their sexual health and you know their relationships. And like to have the contrast of uh like um Neil Patrick Harris's character with his husband. Like yeah, I, I can't say enough. <laughs> and you have like, Ash. No. I liked Ash a lot too. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but we didn't learn a ton about Ash. He was just kind of like really pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he and um, Richie have like, Richie has his first like real gay experience with him. Oh, graphic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I even, yeah, I even text you afterwards and I was like, um, I seem to clarify what I just saw. And you, were, and you <laughs> clarified for me. And I was like, I was almost right. And yep. you know, 
I was like, no, you're on the right path. You just, you're, you're not quite there. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a little worse than you expected. Yeah. Um, like you guys, when you watch it, you'll, you'll know exactly the moment we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There will be no questions. Um, yeah. But it is another, <laughs> another thing. Like, I mean, they kind of handled it a little bit in Queer as Folk. Like they, they got a little bit more detailed with, you know, the ins and outs of learning about sex from your partner uh, because they don't teach you these things in school. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, that so, was yeah. definitely not covered in my sex education. Barely anything was covered in my sex education. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have Jill, um, who was like the best friend. We all exist. So we're in every gay friend group. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you're, your your female ally that is there for you and rooting for you and like i i honestly didn't know and this like and this is i think also just because this was way before my time when this was all happening i was like six or younger you know mm -hmm. um that there were people who were dying of this disease alone and she was of a group that went to spend time with them in the hospital so that you wouldn't be. And she was also there fighting for everyone because yeah. people were put into like jails, like, you know, like hospital jails. I, had, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And like the fact that this is taking place in London, which is not where this started. Like, right. you know, um, we don't, as bad as it is to say this, like we don't teach this in our schools. Mm -mm. Like I, I didn't realize that because I've never done the research. Yeah. Like you know, and like I would be really interested to see an American version of this show, mm -hmm. which to could see be what happened here. Absolutely, that could be a season two. You know, yeah. like see what it was like in the states of where it was going mm -hmm. down. Because you know, you have that one character who um, Jill asked her asked him when he went to the states to get all of this. Uh, information when he went to New York, yeah. you know, all the pamphlets and things, because here we were the ones that were like, this is murdering an entire group of people and we need to do something about it. And everyone was like, well, this is a thing that's happening. And we don't, we don't know. Like everyone thought it was like respiratory. No one understood that it like was sexually transmitted. It was like, what a scary right. time. Mm -hmm. And like, it would totally follow, you know, the Queer as Folk group because the British series came out and a few years later, the English, you know, the, the American version came out, which, you know, I was like, what, 16 and hiding from my parents watching it like 10 o'clock at night. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like that show just sparked my love of hell sparks. It's all good. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I love <laughs> Is yeah. there anything else that we missed that you want to like go over? I don't think so. I mean, we covered the beautiful characters, the beautiful background that they've set this story in, mm -hmm. the fact that they've addressed things that I've never seen addressed on television in general, and mm -hmm. like learned. I, as a gay man, like learned a whole lot, like that I did not, I didn't know. Like I just, I didn't. There's no gay history. Like we don't get taught gay history unless you go out and look for it or you see it on TV. We don't know. We don't know our background. We don't know our history. Uh, I mean, we know the big things. We know Stonewall, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we know about the AIDS epidemic, yeah. you know. We know about Roman yeah. gladiators. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really great to see something based in reality that paints the Alphabet Mafia in a way that makes us human. Like, all the things, you know, and the fact that we're generally, not to get on the soapbox here, but generally, we're experiencing all the things that straight people experience in high school. You know, your first relationship, your first sexual interaction, um, you know, talking to your family about your first your first relationship. We experience those things in our 20s generally. And each of these boys, minus maybe one, or young men, not even boys, like, yeah. you know, they they're experiencing them for the first time in their 20s, which most of us have now gone through. Um you know, depending on what your age is, but it's it's really nice to see that growth and see that, you know, 
that awkward high school stuff that happens in our 20s as gay people. You know, it, it was really, uh, the only word I can say is re refreshing again, like to see, I mean, we've said it over and over again in different ways, um, you know, representation matters. It does. So yeah, like go watch it. It's, it's beautiful. It's painful, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I've got some news for you. We're gonna live. Okay, well, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell us what you thought of, of uh, It's a Sin. And tell us any other, you know, representation films or shows that we should watch and review. And don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any more angsty videos. Bye! He's so good! <laughs> <laughs>